Another gas dehydration method uses a solid bed desiccant instead of a liquid desiccant. A common example of this is the molecular sieve, which is made up of pellets that are electronically polar to water. When placed in line with the gas stream, the polarity of the pellets attracts the water out of the gas into molecule-sized pores on the surface of the pellet. The water is held there until the pellets are saturated. The pellets themselves are then dehydrated by a small volume of heated gas so they can be used again. A third method for dehydrating gas streams involves methanol injection. Methanol is injected into the gas stream, absorbing water in the process. The methanol and water mixture is then disposed of in an environmentally safe manner. Now, methanol injection is rarely used for dehydration because it is toxic, expensive, and disposal is complicated. Those then are the three basic methods for removing water from the gas stream. Liquid desiccants, solid bed desiccants, and methanol injection. Now let's move on to the second major contaminant on the list, hydrogen sulfide, which is also known by its chemical symbol of H2S. Hydrogen sulfide is an acid gas. An acid gas is a gas that forms an acid when combined with water. Two examples of acid gases are hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. Hydrogen sulfide is corrosive and highly toxic. It can be deadly if proper safety procedures are not followed when working in H2S areas. For detailed information on dealing safely with H2S, you can study the module entitled Hydrogen Sulfide Principles. As with water, there are several different methods for removing hydrogen sulfide from a gas stream. The most common methods include chemical reactions, membrane separation, and batch processes. During chemical reaction processes, a chemical is mixed with the gas stream to neutralize H2S. This is referred to as gas sweetening. The most common of these chemical reaction processes is called amine sweetening. During amine sweetening, sour gas, which is natural gas containing acid gas, is subjected to a stream of amines. The amines absorb the acid gas, leaving sweet gas behind. The amine solution containing the acid gas then goes through a process of distillation to remove the acid gas. The regenerated amine solution can now be used again. Essentially what happens during amine sweetening is that the alkanolamines, which are weak bases, react chemically with acid gases like hydrogen sulfide to form salt complexes.